What's going on, Aces? Welcome back to the channel, my Ace Boom Coons, my day ones. Let me just say that before I go to bed, I have got to do this Traders Recap because it is so good. Baby, I went to Twitter and I'm telling y'all the comments did not disappoint. So let me just say this recap is going to have spoilers. Typically when I do recaps and stuff like that for shows, I try not to do spoilers, but I can't give it what it needs to be given without the spoilers because the spoiler in the finale goes hand in hand with the reunion. So listen, I'm serious. If you haven't watched it yet and you don't want to, you know, have it ruined, have it spoiled, it's okay. Come back after you've watched it. Okay. So now that I gave y'all that disclaimer, baby, let's get into it. Okay. So the finale has five people left, right? So Kate Chastain, who's a trader, right? Then they have Trishel, CT. You guys know that they were way back when they played the game on Roll Rules. That was like, you know, MTV, Real World, that whole era, right? Okay. So then we also have MJ from um, Shaza Sunset and Sandra from um, uh, Survivor. Okay, so Kate, <laughs> while I do like Kate, I used to watch Below Deck way back when, and I like her um, like witty, snarky personality. Her one-liners are funny, but she knew that for whatever reason, she came into the game late because originally she was on season one and she came in to replace... Deontay Wilder, Wilder, who he left the traders early because of childhood trauma. And I'm so glad that he actually mentioned that during the reunion. Um, but he said that, you know, he knows what it feels like to be accused of something that he didn't do. And that was so triggering for him that he needed to excuse himself uh, from the show. I hope moving forward, just a caveat here, but I hope moving forward that Peacock, Bravo, all these, um, you know, reality shows that are making all these multi millions of dollars have some kind of counseling, you know, staff, some kind of psychologist on staff for the reality stars, because in almost every single show, including this one, we've seen, you know, emotional breakdowns, people reach their breaking point, tears. And people need to unpack those things. But I'm glad that he did what he needed to do for his mental health. He left. Okay, so enter Kate Justine. Justine. So she comes in as a faithful, right? But Phaedra was the only traitor left. And so she gave Kate an ultimatum. She was like, you know, join me as a traitor or I'm going to have to murder you tonight. So, you know, Kate says she accepts. Okay, so... Trishel, I don't know, you know, I think, I truly think that Phaedra, her, um, well, let me back up a little bit. Dan, who was a traitor, before he left, he set Phaedra up, right? And he put her name down at the round circle, which nobody was checking for Phaedra. She was, you know, laying low. She was actually on the course to win the game. Multiple people had said that. But Dan threw her under the bus. I feel like Trishel, who came out of the gate, gunning for Peppermint, who was the only trans woman on the show. You know, she's black, but she got her out of there. She was attacking all these women of color for the entire season, right? Trishel is nothing if not a consistent, one of the most Karen-esque people, women. She is the biggest Karen to have ever karen Okay, she was a Karen 20 years ago on World Rules, and she's a Karen to this day, okay? So much so that, you know, she threw MJ under the bus. So after the finale, after they get rid of Sandra, I'm sorry, they vote her out. There's four left. And so there's Kate, CT, MJ, and, um, and Trishel. Chow, they got rid of um, Kate. So, you know, Alan... Cummings, he's like, you know, we have one last vote. 
do you want to banish one more person or you wanted to split the money four ways? Because if it's a trader that's left, they'll take the whole thing. So they realize Kate is a trader. They get her out. So there's three faithful people left. They could all split the $200,000, right? MJ from Shaws of Sunset and then Kate, um, CT and Trishel from uh, MTV. And so MJ, fully trusting that they'll do the right thing, she's like, okay, great. We're all, you know, three faithfuls. We can stop the game now. Boom. They both throw red, those red pouches into the fire to banish her. They come together. But Trishel tries to be, I guess, slick or funny or whatever by, you know, punishing CT one last time because Alan asked them to vote again. That's what I mean. She is nothing else. She is nothing if not consistent. I'm telling y'all, Trishel is the biggest Karen. And oh my goodness. And I've worked with people like her. I've gone to school with people like her. And now that I am a grown woman, I make it my business to turn my back and stay away from people like her. She is dangerous. She wrote CT and you should you should have saw his face. He was like, what? And she said, essentially, I'm punishing you for not, you know, lighting my torch when they were in the circle. Um, he lit John's instead. Now, CT is the other side of the coin. He's he's not a Karen. He's the Trump supporting redneck kid. I'm, I mean, he just is. That's he was he showed up to the reunion. Everybody else had on suits and ties and ball gowns. He came in a tight corduroy <laughs> jacket with a t-shirt and some rolled up trousers. I and this man just won a hundred thousand dollars. Anywho, um, but yeah, CT was look he was looking out for CT the whole the whole season. He was like, you know, I'm glad that I have Trishel because I know she'll, you know, look out for me. He kept if you listen to what he says, he is completely self self-absorbed and self-centered. So she wrote CT town to, you know, try to jar him. But um, since they were in a deadlock vote, Alan made him vote again. And so she was like, I, I already wrote CT's name down once, MJ. I couldn't write it down twice, so you have to go. So they kicked her out of the winnings and they split it down the middle, which I already knew that was going to happen. I promise you I did. I felt it deep, deep, deep down in the soul, in my soul, in my spiritual. I was like, they about to do her dirty. And when I went to Twitter, they said, <laughs> they said Trishel made it her business to get every single woman of color off that show from Peppermint to Phaedra to Sheree to Ekansu to all of them, child. She was on a mission, okay? And I was like, I'm telling you when it was just those three, I was like, they gonna find a way not to split that money with that girl. And MJ was so pissed at that reunion, she was giving it to him. And, and Trishel was like, I, I don't understand why you're so mad at me. Cause y'all did her dirty the betrayal okay like what do you mean she was in and they were like well, you know you blocked us on instagram i <laughs> people like that y'all i'm telling you people like that will stab you in the back and smile in your face and wonder why you don't want to do the same thing i'm telling you it is it is certain types of people that are socialized they are truly conditioned to believe that they can use and abuse specifically people from marginalized communities and think that they're just supposed to take it with a smile. You know what I mean? Like this, I'm telling you, this was such, and the reunion was such a microcosm. It was such a good insight into society globally too. I'm not even talking about just in America or Western society, but even the people who aren't, you know, um, from the US or the UK. Like MJ, you could tell she came from a collectivist culture. Y'all know I love cultural anthropology. That's my background. But she wasn't even thinking about how they would push her out. And on the flip side, John, who was in parliament in the UK, and Peter, who was the bachelor, which they called him a cult leader, which he kind of he kind of was. Um, they were laughing about it, but he gives me cult leader vibes. <laughs> He does. He stole Phaedra's idea for the Peter Pals and is making a coin out for her, um, selling T-shirts from her um, her idea. But, you know, they were like, we don't understand why Phaedra wouldn't just 
you know, throw Peter under the bus and do the ultimatum and, you know, she would have won the whole thing. Because Phaedra, even though she was reading people down for filth, she's not the type of person culturally to just to, you know, throw you an ultimatum like that unless she has to or throw people under the bus unless she absolutely has to, which is why I feel like she gave up toward the end. She didn't want to throw anybody's name just to throw it um, because people's cultures really are different. But Western Western society, they think that everybody thinks like them, especially the men on this show, think that everybody thinks just like them, just as cutthroat, just as, just as antagonistic. And the women would throw rocks and hide their hands and then be mad when the person who got hit didn't smile in their face. I'm telling you, like people who showed real emotion on this show were typically like Dante while, you know, when he left, um, MJ, who was betrayed and she, you know, rightfully so, but they were like, well, why are you upset? Like they didn't just cut that girl out of hundreds of thousands of dollars or I'm sorry, 60 something thousand dollars. Still, that's a grip. That's a lot of money. But anyway, I had to share my thoughts because this was so good. They're going to make another season. They're already starting the season um, three and I'm going to be here for it. I might do um, episode by episode recaps for you guys. Let me know if you love the traders as much as I do. <laughs> let me know if you guys are watching. I'm about to take my butt to bed because it's late, but um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will talk with you later. Take care, aces. Bye.